Hello and welcome to Dougie's Draw Along. My name's Ricky and I love drawing all the characters from Hey Dougie and I want to help you draw them too. So grab your pens and paper, your pencils or your crayons and let's see who we're drawing today. Ribbit. That's right, it's the frog, Ribbit. Now whenever I draw a character from Hey Dougie, I like to break them down into shapes to make them easier to sketch. So, let's see what shapes make up the frog. So the frog is basically one big triangle. So let's practice drawing a triangle. The kind of triangle we're drawing here has equal sides. That's a pretty good triangle. What other shapes does the frog have? He's got two big eyes. So that's two big circles. In the middle here, two little bean shapes for the pupils. That's the black bit in the eyes. Now Frog does have very long legs, but he keeps them very well hidden. Right, let's put those shapes together. Starting with that big triangle. And there's two big round froggy eyes on top. One goes here. And the other one there. just floating above the top of the triangle. Two little bean shapes here for the pupils. I'm putting them in the middle because he's looking right at you. But if you want to make your frog look in a different direction, we could put them looking right like that. Or we could have them looking left. It depends what you want to draw your frog looking at. And there's only one thing missing now, the little froggy smile. Perfect. I'm going to colour him in. Nice green colour. When I colour in an area, I always like to outline it first and then fill it in. That way, I can colour it in neater. It's a lovely green. It doesn't matter that I went over the mouth, as I can draw it back in afterwards. Now, as his eyes are white and I've drawn it on white, I'm going to give them a little outline. Because I want the eyes to show up. Look at that awesome frog! I really enjoy drawing the frog. He's very simple, but fun to draw. I'm going to draw it again. So start with that big triangle. Head back to the top. Add the eyes. There's two big circles just hovering above the point. And just fill in a little bit there at the top for the pupils. Finally, that frog is smile. I think it's ready to be coloured in. Now the frog lives down at the nature pond, which is a beautiful place to get away from it all. But I think the frog must like seeing the squirrel club get their badges, because it's always there when there's a new badge to be won.
gorgeous green. I'm gonna add back in that froggy smile, colour in those pupils. And I'm gonna give its eyes a little outline just so they stick out on the white. Look at that! Because the frog is so simple to draw, you can dress it up in costumes and add little lily pads and extra details. I told you it had long legs hidden under there. I hope you enjoyed this Dougie's Draw Along. Who are we drawing today? I think Dougie has spotted another bird. It's Henny the Ostrich. Hello! That's right, it's Henny, the really, 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 really big ostrich. Now when I draw a character from Hey Dougie, I like to break them down into shapes to make them easier to sketch. So let's see what shapes make up Henny. Her body is like a cloud. So let's practice that. So it's a cloud with a large puff at the top and three smaller puffs at the bottom. She has a really long neck. So it's a long line like this. And then it's slightly wider at the top. Gets a little bit thinner in the middle. And back out like that. Her beak, oh that's a triangle shape, but a long one and I'm going to draw it pointing to the left. It's like a thin slice of cake. Henny has two very long legs because she's very tall. Two long sticks like this. But Henny has quite knobbly knees. And to do that, we draw a little circle just over it like that. Henny's arms, or her wings, have a flat line at the top and then lots of feathers like this that hang out underneath them. Henny also has very beautiful feathers. She has a set of three on her head, like this. And the same set, just on the back of her bum, her tail feathers. There we go. Finally, Henny has two eyes, and they're positioned as two circles, with one just higher than the other, and two pupils in the middle. Right, now we've practiced all of the shapes that make up Henny, we can put them together. Now Henny's really big, so I need to make sure I've got enough space on my page. So I'm gonna start with her body in the middle to make sure I've left room for her neck and head and her very long legs. So that cloud shape, big puff at the top. Three smaller puffs underneath. It kinda looks like an upside down dog paw print. Now I'm gonna draw her neck and it overlaps here. Very long neck. Slightly wider at the top and where it joins onto her body. I'm going to add her beak, which is that thin slice of cake shape, a triangle. Her eyes, one there and one there, and then her beautiful head feathers. What about her pupils? There we go. Now her very, very long legs, and they come out of the middle puff at the bottom her body. Going to add her knobbly knees, one there and one there, a little line at the bottom for her feet. Her tail feathers, they're the same ones as they are on her head, but just sticking out here. And now her wing, 
like a frilly feather. So a line at the top and then lots of smaller ones underneath. And finally, a big smile. Because she is enormous. I think it's time to colour her in. Now her body is a lovely, strong pink colour. Now when I colour something in, I like to go around the outside first, draw around the shape so I don't go over the edges. I'm also going to draw around her feathers here. And with the same colour, I'm going to colour in just one of the feathers on her bum and one on her head. And it's the bottom one with this pink colour. Both bits. Now I'm going to switch to a bluey purpley colour and colour in those feathers on her body. And the second feather up from the bottom on her tail feathers. And the second feather on her head. Also, the pupils in Henny's eyes, they're not black, they're the same blue as her feathers. Now I need a reddish pink colour to colour in those last feathers. Her neck is a sandy orangey brown colour and that's the same colour as her legs. I'm going to go around the eyes because I want to leave them white. And her legs too. Remembering to include knobbly knees. And her beak is a lovely yellow colour, very bright yellow, like the colour of lemons. It doesn't matter that I'm going over her mouth because I can draw that back in afterwards. Her feet are the same colour as that pinkish red feather we drew, just a little bit like that. Just the tip on the end of her long legs. And now with the black, I'm just going to go around her eyes because the background's white and I want them to stick out. Then with that neck colour there, I'm going to draw in her smile. And there we go, Henny, the really, 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 really big ostrich. Do you know, I had such fun drawing Henny, I think I'm going to draw her again. And I don't need to practice the shapes, because I've already drawn her once and practiced all the shapes before. So let's start with her body, which is like a cloud, a big puff at the top, and three smaller ones underneath. Remember, like an upside down paw print. I'm going to draw in her neck, a very long neck, slightly wider at the top, then they're in the middle, and wide where it joins the body. A big beak, which is like a thin slice of cake. Her eyes that are positioned like this, her pupils in them there. Smile. And then three big feathers on her head. And the same three, just on her bum. I'm going to draw in her really long ostrich legs. Now Henny is really, really big, but she's still scared of things, like kites. And when she's frightened, she can hide behind mountains. <laughs> the confound beasties! <gasps> in her knobbly knees, little lines for her feet, 
finally, the feathers on her body. Line at the top. Lots of little ones sticking out underneath. Right, I think it's time to colour her in. So I'm going to start with that nice pink colour for her body. Drawing around the shape before I colour it in. And the same colour for that bottom feather on her tail feathers and on her head. And now a nice blue colour, sort of a bluey purpley colour for her feathers on her body and the middle feather on her tail feathers and on her head. Now the last feather on her tail feathers and on her head is that reddish pink colour. same colour as their feet, so I'm going to colour that in now. Her neck is an orangey, sort of sandy orange colour, able to go around the eyes. And this is the same colour as her long legs. Now these long legs must come in handy because she loves playing sport. She's very active, this ostrich. Those legs with the knobbly knees. She's so big that her train set is made up of real trains. Here, take a look. Wow. The beak. Oh, that's a lovely, happy yellow colour. Oh, her eyes, that same blue as her feathers. Let's pop them in now. I'm going to give her eyes a little black outline because I want them to show up on the white page. And finally, using the same colour as her neck and legs, to put in her smile. There we go. Henny the really, 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 really big ostrich. As Henny loves sport, why not try dressing her up in one of her favourite activities? Who is for tennis? I really enjoyed drawing Henny the ostrich and I hope you enjoyed drawing her too. Who are we drawing today? Cool man. Cool man. Oh me! <gasps> cool, man! I told you the bab was strong here. That's right, it's the rabbits. The most laid back guys ever. Cool, man. Now, when I draw a character, I like to break it down into its separate shapes because then it's easier to sketch. So let's have a look what shapes make up the rabbits. Now the rabbit's head is a big circle. So let's have a practice at a circle. I like to start at the top and go round like this. Nope, that's a pretty good circle. What other shapes are the rabbits made out of? Now the body is like a traffic cone, a long triangle shape. So not an equilateral triangle, this one needs to be taller than it is wide. That's pretty good. Now its ears, they look like two long party balloons, but they're slightly thinner where they meet the head. So one's out at an angle like this, to a round point, and then back like that. Or a wonky sausage. Let's do one the other side, up to a wide end and then it kind of tapers to a slightly thinner one, like that. <laughs> if you go like this, there could be carrots. <laughs> the rabbit's face has this jelly bean kind of shape. The nose is a triangle but pointing downwards. Got a smile. Two little eyes that are quite close together, no wider apart than the nose. There we go. And the rabbit's paws are like two little upside down semicircles. Think of it like a slice of orange, flat at the top, and then a 
round bit underneath. Another one right next to it. The rabbit has its paws like that. Let's try putting those shapes together. So I'm going to start with the rabbit's round head. I'm going to draw the circle slightly smaller this time because I want to fit it on my page. And then that long triangle, like a cone. It doesn't matter that the shapes overlap, it just shows how the whole character goes together. Those big ears. Slightly wide at the top. Then thinner in. And on the other side. And now that jelly bean shape for its mouth area. The little upside down triangle for the nose. The eyes just above. Big smile. And we pause. A little upside down semicircles. Now I know what you're thinking. There's a couple of things missing. Hmm. Well, one of them is the rabbit's teeth, which is just a little box underneath a smile there. And all the rabbits have a very cool headband. And you can do that with just two straight lines. And then a zigzag across the top. I think I can colour that in now. So the rabbits are mostly grey. Colour its ears a grey colour. Its face around here. It doesn't matter if I go over where the eyes are because I can draw them back in afterwards. But I am leaving space for the headband and that jelly bean shape for the mouth. And the rest of the body here is also grey, but I'm going to leave those two little paws white. Right, now the mouth, or the jelly bean shape, it's kind of a nice pink colour. And leave a little bit of room for the nose, and a square here is the rabbit's teeth. The nose is kind of a much darker pink. Sort of a dark mauve. Do a nice little smile. And with black, I'm going to add in those eyes. And the rabbit's headband, a lovely warm yellow. I think that rabbit looks cool, man. I had such fun drawing the rabbit, I think I'm gonna draw it again. So I'm gonna start with that round shape for the head, a big circle. 
and then that tall triangle shape like a traffic cone links in here. Then those two big bunny ears that get slightly wider as they stick out. And then join onto the head there. And on the other side. Now I'm going to draw that kidney bean shape, like the jelly bean, that's the mouth bit. So it's round like this. And then it dips in just there, joins again. And then the nose, which is an upside down triangle. Two little eyes. And a funny smile. Oh, remember to put those teeth in this time. There we go. Little slices of orange here for the paws. And the rabbit's cool headband. Now the rabbits love to do laid back things, like a bit of yoga. They like to help the squirrel club pick their carrots, obviously. Rabbits love carrots. Now I've got the lines again, I'm gonna color it in. So the rabbits are all gray color. And you can just colour over your pencil lines. But just be wary to leave space for all of your colours. Remember, it doesn't matter if I go over the eyes here because I can draw them back in again after. The body is grey too. Lovely soft grey fur. Now a pink for the mouth area, just a light one, just to colour that bit in there. Leave a little bit of room for the nose. And I'm going to leave that little square white for the rabbit's teeth. And that kind of rich pink, dark mauve colour there. Do the nose to the triangle. Pointing downwards, the same colour I'm going to make that bit smile just sitting over the top of their teeth the rabbit's eyes quite close together make sure that they're within the size of the nose and now time for that cool yellow headband red zigzag just to finish it off ah yeah that is one cool rabbit man but once you've mastered drawing the rabbit what other outfits can you dress them up in now at magic shows rabbits pop out of magician's hats. So maybe this rabbit should be a magician. Ta-da! And that is one magic and cool looking rabbit. I think we all deserve our super awesome drawing a rabbit batch. Who are we drawing today? Oh, what do you envisage for Nigel and I's new pied -à -terre? Well, the walls go here. <laughs> I've made a wall. Windows here. Windows! Garden. Stairs. 
water feature. Ribbit. <laughs> and some finishing touches. It's ready! Oh, Nigel, isn't it wonderful? That's right, it's Mr and Mr Crab. John and Nigel. Now, whenever I draw a character from Hey Dougie, I like to break them down into shapes to make them easier to sketch. So what shapes make up Mr. and Mr. Crab? The most obvious shape is their body. It's a semicircle. It's like an upside down slice of orange. So a flat bottom and then an arc over the top. And their eyes are just two big circles. That, the one like that. Their legs are like little lolly sticks, but slightly curved. And then one the other side as well. And their claws, when they're closed, look like flower petals. So just a shape like this. And those flower petals are joined to the body by a bendy arm. Just like a V, but pointing up towards the sky. And this will change shape depending on what you draw Mr. and Mr. Crab doing with their arms. There are a couple of little details that help you tell John and Nigel apart, but we'll get to those in a minute. Right, I've practiced all the shapes, so I think it's time to put them together. So I'm gonna to start with that body shape, which is like half a circle. Here we go, with a line at the bottom. Now I'm gonna have John's legs, which are those slightly bendy lolly sticks, just coming out from one side here, and the other side here. They kind of follow the curve of his body. Now a little line at the bottom of each of them for his feet, and I like to draw his claws just on his waist, like it's like this. So a petal here, just pointing outwards, and one on the other side. That V shape, or his arm with his bent elbow, that V pointing up. And the same the other side. Now his eyes that float just on the top of his head, and they touch in the middle. And I'm going to put his pupils in, which is just like a little curve on the edge like that. I'm going to have him looking over to the left. John feels quite talkative and usually has a big smile on his face. Do a big smile like that. Like that. But John has a little moustache, like me. I do that with just two little dashes, one here and one here. Now finally, just along the bottom of his body, I'm going to do a little line, this little wavy one, couple of little dots for John's markings. Right, I think it's time to colour him in. John is two different shades of orange. His body is a little bit lighter, but his arms, legs, and that pattern on the bottom of his body were a little bit darker. Just going to leave room for them. I like to go around the area that I'm going to colour in to help me stay inside the lines. I'm going to colour over his moustache but that's okay because I can draw that back in afterwards. Now he's a slightly darker orange is for his legs and his claws.
And now just those little dots on his body. Red colour for his feet. And now with the black, I'm going to draw in John's moustache. There's two little lines. Just one there and one there. I'm going to give his eyes a black outline so they stick out against the white page. Then I'm just going to colour in his pupils. There you go, John the Crab. I had such good fun drawing Mr. Crab that I think I'm going to draw Mr. Crab. Nigel is a little bit different. He's a little bit thinner. So let's draw that semicircle, but it's a slightly longer semicircle. Down across the bottom. And then his little legs, there you go, like that. And like that. The little line at the bottom for his feet. Now Nigel is more reserved, so his claws are not going to be on his waist. It's going to be held down against the floor. So it's just like the shape of his body, but much smaller. And then little lines to join them up. Now Nigel wears glasses. So I'm going to draw his eyes just above his head, like on John. Touching in the middle. And because he wears glasses, I'm going to draw a smaller circle inside of here to create the frames. I'm going to have him looking left as well. A little line there for his pupils. And the edge of his glasses got two little clothes hooks that point downwards. Or the shape of a tap. Now on the lower part of Nigel's body is a little wavy line, just like there was on John. Got a couple of dots in there again. And then a little smile. Right, I think it's time to colour Nigel in. Nigel's body is a light pink colour. So I'm going to go around these little dots again. It doesn't matter if I go over Nigel's mouth, because I can just draw it back in afterwards. And the rest of Nigel's body is a darker pink. So include his legs, and his claws. Just follow along that wavy line on his belly. Nigel's feet are an even darker, richer pink. Now I'm going to colour in his glasses. Nigel's glasses are a lovely sky blue colour. Now I'm going to draw in his pupils with a little bit of black. Now you can put the pupils in any place in Nigel's eyes if you want him looking in a different direction. And finally, with a rich purple colour, I'm going to draw back in Nigel's smile. There you go, Mr. Crab. Why not draw Mr. and Mr. Crab together at the beach? I really... Who are we drawing today? Oh my! This is incredible! What an original perspective! Ooh, the verdant greens of the hills, the yellows of the meadows! Glorious! Glorious! Look! Look! The lush foliage! The total celebration of life! That's right! It's Tino, the artistic mouse. 
Now, whenever I draw a character from Hey Dougie, I like to break them down into shapes to make them easier to sketch. So what shapes make up Tino? Now, I think Tino's body is shaped like a sports racket. So write this for the handle or his body and then round and up like this for his head. And then there's another racket shape overlapping. So the handle can stick out to one side to make his nose. Stay in like this for his head. His nose, like a ball, like this. The two dots for his nostrils. His eyes are slightly long circles, like egg shapes. The two darker circles inside for his pupils. His ears, again, slightly long circles, like that, with another one on the inside. And there's two of these, one on top of his head, one to the side. His legs are like little thing lolly sticks. With a little line across like that for his foot. His arms are much the same, just like lolly stick shapes as well. And his tail droops down towards the floor and curves out, a little slide. Tino often wears an artist's hat, like a beret. And that's simple to draw. It's like a sausage shape, like this. With a little pop at it like that. So now we've practiced all those shapes, I think it's time to put them together. Now I'm going to start with his body, which is like a sports racket shape. And then another one overlapping, but sticking out to one side. Go around this. Draw a circle on the end of this handle here to make his nose. Now I'm going to add in his ears, slightly long circles, one on the edge here, just touching the top of the racket. Another circle on the inside. One on the top of his head, pointing up. His legs just sticking out the bottom. Two little thin lolly sticks. His arm just at the back of his body here. Mousy tail. So draw a little line in for his feet. One, two. A little line across his belly for his trousers. And as Tino is an artist, he likes to wear an artist's top, which is stripy. Now let's pop in his face. So the two slightly long circles here, like eggs for eyes. Little eyebrow over the top. A smile. He's happy from doing lots of art. Two little nostrils for his nose. And finally, his artist hat. A little sausage. A bit like that. Right, I think it's time to colour him in. So I'm going to start with Tino's face, like a brownie grey colour. And I'm going to draw around the shape that I'm going to colour in first so I stay inside the lines. So I'm going to go around his mouth and his eyes. And his hand, same colour, so his feet and his tail.
I'm going to draw over his eyebrow, but it's okay because I can draw that back in afterwards. Now I'm going to colour in Tino's nose, and his nose is a lovely plum colour, pinky red. I'm going to colour over his nostrils because I can draw those back in afterwards. Now his nose is the same colour as his trousers. So from this line here, I'm going to colour in his trousers. And his tail fits into his trousers as well. Now for the stripes on his artist's top, I'm using a dark purple. I might add an extra stripe in here. Not worrying about my lines so much. For the same purple, I'm going to put in his nostrils and his nose. Put in a little bit of pink for his tongue because I've got his mouth open. And with a light pinky peach, I'm going to colour in the insides of his ears. And with a black, I'm going to do the inside of his mouth. His pupils and his eyes. And his artist hat. And finally, with a slightly darker brown than his face, I'm going to draw in his eyebrow. And there's Tino, the artistic mouse. He looks ready to do some art, and I think I'm ready to do some more art too. I had such fun drawing Tino, that I'm going to draw him again. I've already practiced all the shapes, so I'm going to dive right in, starting with that body and head shape, which is like a sports racket. Or an upside down bowling pin. Another one that overlaps, that goes out towards his nose. And then on his nose, that round circle. Two slightly long circles like this, or squashed ones for his ears. One there, and one there. Little egg shapes for his eyes. The pupils in the middle. Smile, a little tongue. Now that I've practiced all the shapes and I've drawn him once, I can do these bits in any order I like. Pop his little legs in. His little tail. His arm. The line for his trousers and his stripes. And his little artist hat. Not forgetting his nostrils. One, two. Okay, I'm gonna color him in. Starting with that brown color for his face. Going around the outlines first so I don't go over the lines when I color it in. Around his eyes, and his mouth. A bit for his hands, and his feet, and then his tail. A rich plum colour for his nose and his trousers. A nice purple for his stripy artist top, leaving white in between. Put his little nostrils in. A little pink for his tongue. That's if you draw him with his mouth open. Inside of his ears, light pinky peach colour. Black for the inside of his mouth. His pupils, his eyes, and a little artist hat. And finally, his little eyebrow. There we go. Tino, the artistic mouse. If you're drawing an artistic mouse, 
it would be good to draw him creating a work of art. There we go. Magnificent. I really enjoyed drawing Tino the artistic mouse and I hope you enjoyed drawing him too. See you next time for more Dougie's Draw Alongs. Bye bye.